science. This is a short version of a talk I gave at SEG in New Orleans in 2015. It's not a very technical talk. Um, it's about image interpretation and specifically about a tool called Pick This that uh, Agile, along with some others, has built um, it's out there out there on the web. I just want to tell you the story of how the tool came about and what we think it could be used for. Image interpretation is hard. Seismic is weird and noisy and ambiguous. People, interpreters, are subjective, biased, inconsistent, and fallible. But hardly anyone puts any of that on their resume. So, I mean, you know, look at an image like this. You can see that there's, there's lots of ways to interpret it. Uh, in fact, there are hundreds of ways to interpret it. Claire Bond and some others did a really cool experiment um, probably about 10 years ago um, where they gave that image, which has actually come from a model, so they know, they know what the answer is, um, to lots of different interpreters and found that the responses were highly dependent um, on the interpreter's background. So very idiosyncratic, subjective interpretations. and. Um, they also came up with some really nice ways of, um, of visualizing some of these results. And this, this image really stuck with me. It's a heat map, basically, of lots of different interpretations by lots of different people of the major faults in this. Um, I think it's a, like a slope thrust fault from, uh, from West Africa. And there's been some other experiments along these kind of lines. Um, Don Heron and Bob Wegner um, in Houston and the uh, uh, GSH ran some experiments about five years ago where they challenged people to, for example, in this picture, interpret the salt. And uh, I don't know how many responses they got. The, the winning one looked like this by Mike Norton at Samson. Uh, actually, he won several of their, their contests, I believe. And, um, you know, really interesting experiment, but they only published the, the winning response. And you know, with, with these things, I think it's kind of interesting if you get to see, see what everybody did. Anyway, these, these experiments stuck with me. And then um, I coordinate the, uh, the tutorial column in the Leading Edge, SEG's magazine. And, um, and I heard from Don Heron, and he wanted to do a tutorial on picking on conformities, which is a really cool subject and had this line, beautiful line here from Brazil, with an obvious uh, unconformity on it. Well, more than one, but um, one big one. And um, he, uh, he, he wanted to write this tutorial about this. And I thought, well, this would be an interesting opportunity to collect lots of interpretations and maybe even uh, do that on the web uh, with an interactive tool. So at the hackathon last year in Denver, which was at, at the, it was right before the SEG, um, uh, a, a couple of guys from Agile, Evan Bianco and Ben Bauer, uh, along with um, Jacob Boshe and Chris Chalcraft, built the first version of Pick This. And you can see Evan demoing it here. And actually, the live demo was, was pretty cool because the de deployed app was running and um, the room full of of people got to got to pick um, pick the line live right in the demo and uh, and see the results sort of instantaneously. So it was a, it was a really cool demo, and um, it's been on the web now for quite a while. Actually, Don Heron's example, and it now has over three hundred and eighty interpretations. So here's here's a heat map um, of uh, of them a few weeks ago, actually, right before SCG, and. Um, you can see the orange uh, glowing kind of um, unconformity where most people agree. And then there are places like on the right here where it bifurcates, um, where, where people have disagreed and perhaps there's, there's multiple ways of interpreting the image. So what's interesting here is, is you know, it raises questions about what's right. You know, where, where is the unconformity? And maybe the answer is this. Um, as a sort of probability distribution um, is, is the best answer that we have. Maybe collapsing onto a single answer isn't the best approach um, if we've got a way of, of uh, capturing um, the opinions of multiple people. Anyway, we, 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 you know, we let people step through the interpretations. They can actually vote on them and give them a thumbs up or thumbs down. And in this way, um, interpreters can accrue 
uh, reputation points. You can see my points at the top there. Um, and you can get reputation by participating in other ways as well. Um, but the idea is that um, one's peers can sort of up and down vote <laughs> your efforts and um, uh, you know credit you or <laughs> in a very small way sort of discredit them. Um, and the hope then is that the great interpretations and perhaps even the great interpreters will kind of float, if you like, to the top. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to, since um, you know, this is a technical uh, talk, give you a little bit of background on the uh, on the app itself. Um, it's written in Python and uh, and JavaScript. Um, it's running on uh, Google's App Engine platform uh, right now. Actually, we have plans to move it to uh, Amazon's AWS uh, platform. Um, uses Pillow and Pymorph. Um, it, it, in, on the Python side, on the server side, for doing some image processing, um, and Raphael JS for the uh, drawing and mouse events on the front end. Um, and you can go play with it right now on pick, pickthis.io. this.io. Um, outside of that original team, there have been some other contributors, apart from myself, um, Steve Purvis, who's a fantastic programmer in Spain. Uh, has uh, contributed a lot of some of the uh, trickier functionality. For example, we have um, random cohorts so that you can do sort of blind clinical style um, trials uh, against different groups with different images, for example. And um, Jesper Dranch, as a student in Germany, has also contributed to the code base. And um, yeah, we've had over 750 users, nearly 2,000 interpretations. And people are actually voting on on interpretations, which is really cool to see. Now, there's there's clearly some potential applications of the tool outside of uh, outside of geophysics. Um, radiologists, in particular, are often doing these sort of very tricky multimodal interpretations, where they're looking at multiple kinds of images, trying to figure out where, for example, the edges of a tumor are, so that they can perhaps go and treat it. So, radiation oncology. Um, there's a, a lot of sensitivity around getting um, the best answer. Um, so, you know, we're really interested in exploring some of those avenues. And of course, uh, in geology, we have outcrop. Uh, we might, there might be subtle interpretations on outcrop. So, for example, I challenged people to interpret the angular, the strongest angular unconformity in this image. And um, you can see that actually uh, people have picked out s several uh, unconformities. Um, you know, so uh, th there may be some subtlety around how you ask the question and what kind of challenge you pose. Um, maybe I should have uh, put a, a little marker on one part of the unconformity here just to sort of specify which one I was after. It's actually the, um, the upper one. Um, there is a little bit of metadata about the images. We try and keep track of permissions, for example. We want people to be able to reuse these and use them almost like any other reference you might use and people can leave comments too um, so there's a little bit of sort of social interaction on the app um, as i mentioned you can accrue reputation shown here on the left uh, these are different users and you can see uh, how many images they've uploaded and the number of picks they've made like interpretations that is and votes they've received um, there's you know, the thing about in image interpretation is we often don't know the answer, right? So um, there's, a, there's a clear connection here to mo forward modeling, uh, where, of course, you do know the answer. So um, uh, we have this tool, Modeler, um, modeler.io, which you can um, take a photo even or draw a picture, uh, draw a model, and then forward model it. So I've got uh, Eric Jones's face here <laughs> as a sort of... Uh, using the edges in that image as uh, impedance contrasts to make a, a forward model. Um, last Christmas, I drew a tricky unconformity in a sort of Christmassy scene um, to forward model. Uh, you can turn that into seismic data. And then I challenged people on pick this to pick that and, well, and sort of wobbly unconformity in the middle. And you can see uh, people have I've had a go here, and you can see where it's where it's tricky, right? And the geology I created made some quite strong ambiguities, and um, 
and also note somebody drew a uh, a snowman which i thought was kind of cute pretty sure i know who it was too <laughs> um and uh, we actually have a couple of researchers at the university of aberdeen conducting some uh, interpretation experiments uh, in some data from the browse basin and also from offshore namibia um you're welcome to go and take part in those experiments uh, go to pickthis.io look at all the images and find the ones from browse and Namibia, and uh, you can take part in them right now. Um, you know, we, we've we been brainstorming kind of how people could use a tool like this. Um, clearly, in the classroom, uh, it could be interesting to have a, a group of people uh, doing an interpretation and see the results immediately, kind of like these classroom response systems, um, but for images. Um, I'm interested in in whether there's an application here for knowledge sharing for sort of saying hey I, you know i've got this line how would you pick this um i really like the idea of sort of nailing down some evidence around image treatments you know um, image processing methods to enhance an image for example or make faults clearer you know can you actually prove that method a is better than method b i think we can help with problems like that and then there's some fascinating potential applications around machine learning and providing labeled data sets to machine learning algorithms. And, you know, finally, I'd, I'd love to see a sort of um, interpretation competition, kind of head-to-head -head, um, or perhaps timed uh, interpretation challenges, I think could be, could be really fun. I've noticed that some of this uh, Im image interpretation stuff with heat maps has emerged a little bit in the press recently. I saw this... Uh, newspaper inviting people to try and draw um, I think it was the 25th anniversary of the uh, reunification of Germany so they were inviting people to draw the old boundary so people could remember where it was obviously some people uh, <laughs> were being quite facetious in their responses but uh, they ended up with thousands of uh, thousands of answers um, and the New York Times ran a quite a thoughtful piece recently on how family income predicts um, the likelihood that kids will go to college and uh you know they challenge people to sort of draw that function um before revealing uh, everybody's responses and telling the story about you know what the story behind the data basically I thought it was a really interesting way of framing a, an interesting social problem um so that's basically all i have I, i'd love you to go and try it out um absolutely love to hear from you if you um have thoughts about how uh, how we could apply this tool um you know it, this is this is here for the community i want people to use it uh, it's supposed to be fun so um yeah any ideas absolutely welcome and contributions as well uh, if you have some if you have some coding skills um here's my contact details at agilegeoscience.com i'm on twitter as quincunx and um all of this content is uh, licensed under the terms of creative commons please share it